Hi guys, Brian Bowes here. Shipping of reptiles in a safe and dependable fashion is one of the cornerstones of the modern reptile hobby. Today I want to go through and demonstrate how I package my boas for shipping and I'll also give you some tips that you can use to make the whole process as smooth and straightforward as possible whether you're on the shipping end or the receiving end. And of course, since this is a boa channel, I'll have to take out one of my boas to share with you. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos about breeding and keeping boas in captivity. So almost all shipping of boas these days is done by FedEx Priority Overnight Shipping. And this is really convenient because I remember back when I was a kid and a teenager just starting to get into reptiles, you, if you wanted to ship reptiles, you had to do it by air freight collect. So you would actually have to have them shipped to your the nearest airport, and then you would have to go pick them up, which could be several hours away, um, and accept the shipment that way. It was also pretty expensive. So with FedEx, it's really convenient because you can go, you know, be surfing on the internet on your favorite uh, reptile classified site, see a snake you want. A few clicks later, it's being FedExed to you. When I first started shipping my baby boas, I had a lot of anxiety and was just worried that the snakes might not make it safely to their destination. But now, well over 100 shipments later, I can honestly say I never had any issue that resulted in any harm to any of the, uh, the uh, boas. The worst that I've had happened is that a shipment might be delayed by a day, um, in which case the snakes were perfectly fine. They were just a day late. Um, People often will ask me about shipping, you know, if you've never had a reptile shipped to you, it can be a little bit daunting and a little bit uh, anxiety provoking. Um, so part of the reason for this video, if you are buying a baby from me, I'd like to show you exactly how I package them up, just so you can know what to expect. To ship reptiles, you need to use FedEx. You can't use UPS or US mail, it's got to be FedEx priority overnight. And fortunately, there are companies set up that have FedEx accounts that you can apply to be part of and you can actually use their FedEx account. If you want to set up your own FedEx account for shipping reptiles, it's um, a lot of, it's relatively difficult and a lot of um, red tape and you know, I don't know why you would want to do that when you can go to one of these companies and you can just use their account and I think you actually save money this way as well. So I use one called um, Reptiles Express, but there's also Ship Your Reptiles and Reptiles to You. So you just go to the website of one of these companies, you apply for a, an account, you give them you know, your shipping information, all that. It's really straightforward. And then whenever you want to do a shipment, you just go to create a label, you put in your address and you put the address and shipping information of the recipient and then you pay for the label and then you just print out a label like this. So it's really straightforward, really convenient. Um, Reptiles Express also offers a lot of shipping supplies. So you can just go there, you can buy boxes and bags and heat packs and things like that which you'll need for shipping. So it's all right there in one place. In order for your shipment to be successful, you wanna make sure that the weather's appropriate. So it's really important to check the temperature forecast, both on your end as well as on the receiving end and the city where it's going. So if the daily high is going to be below 40 degrees Fahrenheit on either the shipping or the receiving end, then that's too cold to ship. The daily high is going to be between 40 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit on either end, then you can ship but use a heat pack. If the daily high is between 70 and 90 on, either, on both the shipping and the receiving end, then you can ship and you don't want to use a heat pack because it would be too hot. And if it's going to be above 90 degrees Fahrenheit on either end, you can't ship. That's going to be too hot to ship. And remember, these are daily highs. The nighttime temperature can be a little bit lower and that's going to be fine. It's also really important to communicate closely with the recipient of the snake and just make sure they're going to be home when the package is scheduled to be delivered. So FedEx usually gives a time by which the package is expected 
For most U.S. addresses, it's delivered by 10.30 a.m. for the priority overnight shipping. Sometimes it's noon, and in some cases it's not till 4.30 if you live in a more rural area that's farther away from the main roads. So if the person is not going to be available, another option is to have it shipped to their nearest FedEx ship center. And then the package can be held there and they can pick it up after work or school or just when it's more convenient. But it has to be a FedEx ship center. Uh, you can't just ship to your nearest FedEx provider because a lot of the FedEx providers like mailboxes, etc., cetera, and these smaller shops, they're not uh, FedEx ship centers. Okay, so now on to the packaging materials. So you, in order to ship snakes, you need to use a box that is lined with styrofoam inserts. And you can actually get these boxes at some of the reptile shipping sites. I get these at Reptiles Express. And I usually basically use two sizes for most of my shipments. So this is a um, 12 by nine inch by six inch box. And then there's also the seven by seven by seven inch cube, which I'll use also. But the boxes, come like this and they're pretty easy to assemble you just pull down the sides like this and then you want to put tape across the bottom of the box like this got to hold this straight so it gets nicely lined up hope you guys can see this So I just put the tape across this way, but it's also important to put two pieces of tape to seal the shorter end of the box like this. Okay, so you see that's like that, and then I fold that down, and then I do the same thing over here. Like that. So basically you want three pieces of tape on the bottom of the box. The idea is that if that snake should happen to get out of the internal packaging, there's no way it can get through these cracks when you have it sealed with tape. So now you get the styrofoam inserts and each box will have six of them. Wait, let me grab it. Okay, so these are the pieces that go on the bottom and the top. So I'm going to put one in on the bottom like that. And then there's two lengths, okay? There's the shorter piece and the longer piece for the longer side. And they just go in like this. Okay, pretty straightforward. And you notice looking down, they kind of go like that, okay? Um, pretty straightforward. And so once you have your styrofoam in, you want to punch some air holes. So I'm just using a screwdriver. And I just punch three air holes on each of the long sides, and then two on each of the short sides. And then usually you have all this like styrofoam goo, it's not really goo, but you know little pieces of styrofoam. I just get rid of them because you don't want these all over the place, kind of messy. So just get rid of what you can. So before you ship your box it's important to attach a couple of little signs to the box and these you get at Reptiles Express with your shipping label. The first is just a live animal sticker. It says handle with care, priority overnight shipping only. And then it's got the phone number of Reptiles Express in case that there, anything should happen to go wrong, they can call that number. And then you also have this live animal content. So this is mandated by the Fish and Wildlife Service due to the Lacey Act. And basically you have to identify the species of animal that you're shipping. So with boa constrictors and boa imperator, you don't need to worry about the locality. 
So I'm going to be shipping a Hog Island boa in this box. And that is technically a boa imperator, the common boa. So I just have here common name, common boa, Latin name, boa imperator. And then the quality of animals is one. And you fill this out when you're getting your label and then you print it out. So I'm going to stick these to the box with scotch tape right now. Okay, so I've attached these stickers or these signs to the side and you can see the species and the live animal sign. And so now the box is ready and the next thing you need to decide is whether you're going to use a heat pack or not. As I mentioned, heat pack is only if it's going to be between 40 and 70 as the high. Um, this is the type of heat pack you get. It's for it's a small pet shipping warmer and they're available online, eBay and all over the place. Um, you want to make sure that it's not expired. There's actually a date here. Um, so this says it's 125-2021. Okay, you don't want it to be expired. Get a fresh one if it's expired. And the way you work it is you open it up and you expose the chemicals inside to the oxygen in the air and kind of shake it. And that will start an exothermic reaction which gives off heat. Um, there's a red stripe on one side and that's the side the heat comes out of. So I'm not going to open it right now because this is just for a demonstration. But what I do is I sh will actually tape it to the top of the styrofoam box using four pieces of tape, one in each direction. And the red stripe should face out because you want the heat to go down and to go into the box where the snake is. You can also uh, attach it to the side if you prefer. You only want to use one of these. I've heard stories about people who've used like four of them in a box and all that heat has no way to escape and the poor reptile ends up getting cooked. Okay, you also, you don't want to use them if it's going to be above 70 degrees out because the, the heat can also build up that way. Um, now part of the reason for punching these holes is not just to let air in, it's also to let heat out. But as long as you use, you pack it like this, one, pack, one um, heater will be fine to ensure that your reptile stays the appropriate temperature if it's between 40 and 70 degrees outside. The next consideration is what you're going to put your snake inside of when it's in the shipping box. And I use two different choices. So I either use a cloth snake bag or I use a large plastic deli style container. And so typically if I'm shipping small baby snakes and I'm shipping just one, I'll use the deli style container. And I think this probably provides a little more protection, physical protection for the snake. So the way I use it, I put some aspen bedding on the bottom about an inch and then I put a paper towel in there for the snake to hide under. And you can see I have air holes it's important to either get one that comes pre-drilled or to drill or melt them yourself. I just use a soldering iron and I melt holes. It's a lot easier than drilling. So you put your snake in there and then you secure it. And you want to make sure that it's secure all across the whole circumference of the container. Okay, and obviously you want to make sure that there's no gaps want to make sure that the paper towel isn't sticking out. You don't want any way that your snake can get out. And when it's properly in place, very few snakes are not are going to be able to push this up, you know, because it stays pretty tight. But just to be sure, I will actually use scotch tape. And I actually tape about six pieces of tape spaced around the circumference just to make sure they can't get out. And I've never had any issues with snakes getting out, but I did get a shipment once where the shipper had put two snakes that were about, these were probably close to three feet, and they were in a very small deli container. Both of them just loose in the deli container, no paper towel, no substrate, and it wasn't even held in place. And by the time it got to me, they pushed their way out, and when I opened the box, the snakes were just loose inside of the cardboard box, which... You know, I was not a happy camper, but, you know, fortunately the snakes were fine. So the other choice that I'll use are these bags, these little cloth bags. And when I'm using these, I make sure to put some paper towels in there for the snake. Just, you know, to give them something to hide under, and you know, a little bit of protection against any kind of, you know, bumping. 
and then I'll use these, this drawstring and I'll tie it several times. But then, very importantly, I use a zip tie. Okay, so you definitely want the zip tie just to make sure that your snake can't accidentally get out. And when you put the zip tie on, you gotta make sure your snake's down here so it doesn't get its head or tail caught in the zip tie. That would be a real disaster. But then you tighten the zip tie like this. Okay, make sure it's good and tight and the snake can't get up. And then you just trim the end like that. Okay. And the person, of course, is going to have to cut it with scissors when it arrives in order to get the snake out. But at least this way, there's no way the snake can get loose. And so I use these shipping bags if I'm shipping more than one snake. Because, you know, typically the boxes aren't big enough for two of these containers. Um, when I'm shipping a larger snake that's too big to fit in one of these deli containers, I'll also tend to use a larger shipping bag like this. So now that we have our snake inside of the internal packaging, I'm just going to take some newspaper and I'm going to kind of ball it up as an internal parchment like this. Just ball this up. And then you can see that inside of the box we have the internal packaging with the snake. And I just pushed some newspaper down there. So you can see there's still some a little bit of airspace, but the pack, the deli cup is kind of suspended in the newspaper just to provide it from any mechanical impacts or jolts or things like that. And then you take the lid, okay, which if you have the heat pack, it's going to be facing in like this. Put the lid down. And then you want to put receipts records, you know, any correspondence with the recipient, you put on top of the foam piece on the top. And then we just hold these down. And we're going to tape the top the exact same way as we tape the bottom. I'm just going to do this real quickly. I'd be much more careful if this was an actual shipment. This is just for display. So we have across the top. And then you want to do like this. And like this on the short sides. Okay. And then you get your label, your FedEx label. So you can get these pouches, these plastic pouches at FedEx. Um, you basically you just trim the label that you printed out and you stick it in the pouch and then it's sticky You just peel this off and then it just sticks to the top like this. Okay, real straightforward You don't need to use these pouches If you want you can just tape the label directly and that works also But just make sure that the barcode is clearly um, Visible so they can scan it and that your shipments ready to go when you drop it off at FedEx and then you want to take it to your FedEx. So I typically drop off the packages um, in the late afternoon. So that way they don't sit around all that long. And then the next morning, they're scheduled to be at the recipient. So I want to reiterate that it's really important to stay in close communication with the recipient. So once you drop off your package at FedEx, you let them know that the package is on its way. And of course, FedEx also gives you a tracking number. So you give the recipient the tracking number and they can closely follow the shipment and you can follow it as well. And so once the recipient receives the package and unpacks the snake, it's really important that they send an email just letting the shipper know that the snake made it okay. And if there's any issues, let them know the issues so hopefully they can be resolved at that point. So I hope that was somewhat helpful for explaining how I ship snakes. If you're expecting a package from me, you have a little bit of knowledge of what to expect. And if you're going to be shipping on your own, hopefully these tips will be somewhat useful. Of course, I wanted to show you just one quick snake. This is one of my 2018 Holdback Hog Island uh, females. So she's now almost two years old. So you can see she's probably a little over three feet really starting to show some really nice colors. All of these beautiful pink, pinks and oranges and some green overtones. Hog Islands are just a really beautiful boa. 
and they're one of my all-time favorite localities. Um, I also like how laid back and handleable they are. Just a great pet boa and definitely a beautiful one to show to your friends if you want to impress them with the beauty of a naturally occurring locality boa. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and enjoy your boas.